Unlike a red flag, a yellow flag means proceed, but with extreme caution. For most of us, our first encounter with a woman that we're interested in is social media. Very often as men, we do a very, very, very terrible job at that initial vetting because we're so enamored by how good she looks or how round her titties are, or how nice her ass is, that we look past the red flags, we look past the yellow flags. Yesterday, she handed you a bag of shit, right? Today, suddenly, she wants to screw you. Is that a coincidence? Oh, oh, come on. Stace. Whatever. Stace. Do what you want to do. Stace. 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 If the woman has categorized herself on social media as art, <laughs> that is a yellow flag. It's interesting when we see like nude photography and things like that, we frame it as art without actually realizing or acknowledging that art is literally a commodity. Art is something that is bought, sold, and traded. So if you're framing yourself, your aesthetic as art, in some way you're saying that you are to be bought sold and traded. And the most fascinating and interesting thing about you is how you look. And we've all seen these thirst trappy pictures, you know, as a Nigerian, sometimes I'll see it and I'll be like, Madame, sell your maquettes. <laughs> we know you before, we know what you're doing. This is business. You see these pictures, these suggestive pictures where it's like, she's acting like she doesn't know her titties are out, but she's wearing a push up bra. She's acting as if, oh, oh, is that just my ass? But she put it there. Those aspiring social media influencers, those aspiring quote unquote models, those women who can't take a picture without putting a filter or a video without a filter. One of the ways to tell is a woman with a very high post count. You'll see the women, they've posted 5,000, 2,000, 1,000 posts. And it's like, this isn't a business page, man. You're just posting about your face and your body and food. She's looking for attention. Or oh, you see the woman with high follower counts. She's an aspiring influencer. Now I would say if you're able to find a fine woman with a low follower count who barely posts, oh man, you might've found you one. And sometimes you'll see those women like they might have like um, 300 people following them and they might be following like a thousand people. And sometimes the thousand things that they're following, it's like interior design stuff or fashion stuff, but they don't get on Instagram like that. They don't get on social media like that. She's focused on her career or focused on her hobbies or whatever the case may be. That's when when you found a green flag. Those women who are super involved with social media and care more about social media than actual social life. They're not nurturing long lasting or deep meaningful friendships. They're just focused on how many numbers that their phone can show them on likes or followers. Be careful with them. Close. I remember a female friend of mine once told me that ladies adhere to a two thirds rule. I don't know if she termed it like that, but basically she said, you know, when you wear clothes, you can show two out of three things, but you can't show three out of three things. So the things being cleavage, stomach, and legs. If you're showing cleavage, you might be able to show one more thing. So you might be able to show legs, but you shouldn't show stomach. Or if you're showing legs and stomach, you shouldn't show cleavage and so on and so forth. Meaning that you don't have to necessarily be overly modest, but there should be some intention in being modest to a point. So this new popular thing that we're seeing women, they show everything. They show the titties and the stomach and the legs and the back all in the same outfit. It might actually be a red flag. And I'm only saying yellow because it depends on your age group. She just might not be aware. But what I know is that women and girls are inherently self-conscious, right? They don't want the vile male attention, male sexual attention that comes with the gifts that God gave them. So a woman overly enthusiastic about showing it off to the world might also have other characteristics that you will find problematic. And we see it these days, even in this, uh, this gym culture where women are showing up to the gym damn near naked in the name of I'm more comfortable or, you know, I'm less hot or whatever the case may be. When it's like, that's nonsense. You just wanted to show your body. And we also must talk about bikinis as well. And the thing about it is like, <laughs> bikinis have always been interesting for me because the only difference between bikinis and lingerie is context. What the fuck just happened? Eminem just said he was gay four times. And I imagine that a woman who is self-respecting, cognizant of the male gaze and the whole nine, even if she's wearing a bikini, she's not wearing these thong bikinis, these bikinis that are pretty much two strings and things like that. Or she's wearing a onesie. But a woman who's just letting it all hang out, again, 
this might be an indication of other issues that you as her man are going to have to deal with. It might attract attention that you're going to have to deal with. It might be an indication that she wants the attention because again, women aren't stupid. She wants the animalistic competition over her breast, thighs, and vagina. You're going to have to deal with. As opposed to being simple and elegant, she's loud, ostentatious with a look at me demeanor. You're going to have to deal with that type of woman tends to be insatiable. There's no amount of attention, no amount of flowers, no amount of expensive dates that will satisfy her. She's looking for the newest and best and most exciting option available. And at some point, you will no longer be it. And unfortunately, as men, we've been tricked into grading ourselves by our ability to tap dance for female attention. But again, if you're a dude interested in something serious, pay attention to her wardrobe. How does she dress? How does she carry herself? How does she present herself to the public. OGs will tell you, dress how you want to be addressed. Does she dress like a wife, a girlfriend, a mother, a respected woman in the community, or does she dress like a prostitute? Does she dress like she's for sale? Due to the fact that men make my ass itch, I have decided that I am single, celibate, and no longer willing to date anyone. However, if you insist on taking me on a date, there will be a $500 fee. That $500 fee can be paid through Zelle, Cash App, or Apple Pay. I'll send you my phone number and you can send the motherfucking buttons. Then we can discuss an arrangement. However, if you decide that you're going to text me or call me before you send the motherfucking buttons, you will be blocked. Y'all know I wasn't a fan of the passport bro movement. I was less of a fan of the save yourself black man movement. But one of the yellow flags I would say to look for is passport sis. Women who stay on a flight, who stay on vacation, who stay traveling, be wary of them. Sometimes, especially if it doesn't make sense for her age or her financial situation, sometimes an indication that she's being financed by somebody, aka her sugar daddy. Sometimes it's an indication that that she might not be good friends with Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion because everything is on credit. And again, she's living a facade life to impress people on social media or impress people in her life. Sometimes an indication that she gets bored easy. She needs constant validation and constant excitement and constant novelty. She's a soft lifer. <laughs> or... On a lesser note, sometimes it might be an indication that this is a woman who is severely lost and might think that traveling is a way to potentially find herself. But it's cause for concern and it's definitely cause for conversation. In my time doing this cultural anthropology work and also in my personal life, I've been fortunate enough to meet, know, experience, converse with a number of women. And I've noticed some things, primarily that everything that glitters is not gold. And also some of the things that we're now being socialized to glorify in men and in women are actually toxic things, are actually things that lead to terrible outcomes for yourself and for the life that you want to build. Fellas, send this to your boys, have conversations about it, share stories. Fathers, send this to your sons, have conversations about it, share stories. And as we continue to elaborate on some of these conversations, my hope is that we can establish a strong and prosperous Black community full of strong men who are intentional about the women that we choose and the behavior that we reward or that we stay far away from. Thank you guys for watching. Leave it in the comments. Run these likes up. Hit the subscribe button on your way out. Check out some of the other content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.